So here, uh, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to move the motor around uh, with just two fingers. What's up guys, welcome to another Varus Engineering install video. I'm Tom, I'm gonna to be walking you guys through the A90 Supra solid motor mount upgrade. Okay, tools we're gonna to need to install this kit is a 3 8 ratchet, um, more than likely 3 8 anyways, but a ratchet, a long panel popping tool or a short one, depends on whatever you like. I used a 24 inch uh, 3 8 extension you can obviously use any combination that'll get you there, but you will need something that's this long. A four inch extension specifically, universal socket, eight millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, E12, E14. That's external Torx, uh, 12 and 14 sockets. All right, let's talk about what you get in the kit. You're gonna have three different stiffness or durometers of bushings, to suit your whatever your liking is. Get two motor mount bases and two uh, bushing retainers. And of course, you're gonna receive a hardware kit. All right, we need to disconnect the two O2 sensor connectors on the top here. Um, basically, what we wanna do is push this tang back to release the primary lock, then push it down. Then we'll be able to pull it out. like so. And then there will be a little tang underneath that you'll push towards the rear of the car right here. And that will release the pigtail of the connector from this, uh, whatever you want to call it, harness piece here. Next, you want to unclip the pigtails for the O2 sensors from all of the clips. There's one on the heat shield down here. Um, and so that basically you want these wires to be free hanging in order to remove the downpipe. Okay, so once we get the under panels off, um, the one again covering the transmission and the big beefy aluminum shield that covers the underside of the engine and also, um, you know, partially if you have the Varus Engineering Splitter, uh, the rear bolts that hold that up. We're gonna need to remove uh, the downpipe like I have done here. In order to do that, there's going to be a large V-band that attaches this to the exhaust side of the turbo. It's going to be a 13 millimeter uh, bolt. Hopefully that focuses. Um, that'll loosen the V-band. V-band will come off. I like to just take it off fully. It makes things a little bit easier for me to just kind of wiggle out the, uh, the downpipe on the back section uh, with the, there goes my light, <laughs> on the uh, exhaust or I guess muffler side of things. Um, it is a slip fit. So you're gonna wanna again, use a 13 millimeter on the band clamp uh, to loosen that band up and you're gonna wiggle the downpipe uh, loose by pulling it forward and the exhaust back towards the rear of the car. Uh, you can use a little bit of PB blaster or WD-40 or something here to kind of help, you know, get that joint free um, and move around a bit more. Uh, there is a 13 millimeter nut right behind here, right here, uh, that is holding the exhaust up. You can see that I'm able to wiggle this around. There is also a, um, I guess, brace, if you will, towards the rear of the car and there are several 16 millimeter head bolts holding that in. I undo all those bolts. Uh, there will be two more bolts that are covered, uh, uh, you know, behind uh, splash guards or, or covers, if you will, um, that you won't be able to get through. You don't really need to get to. I just take the ones that are visible out. That allows the, the brace to flex enough to give you a little bit of play in the exhaust to wiggle out the downpipe. Now, if you didn't, or if you did skip ahead, before you take the downpipe out, make sure you already unplugged it from the top. Um, if you don't know where these connectors are or how to get them unplugged, just rewind to the beginning and that's what we cover in our very first step. Also, I forgot, there are two 13 millimeter nuts holding on the downpipe or the cat to a bracket on the block. Um, they are copper in color. In fact, they are these. They have a wide flange on them. Again, two 13 millimeter nuts that are holding it on. 
For the driver's side and the driver's side only, uh, we're going to remove the rear portion of the wheel liner um, via a bunch of these coarse thread uh, eight millimeter head bolts. You can't really see that. There, kind of, there you go. There's going to be two windows, if you will. Uh, one right here, hopefully I'm pointing in the right spot, and one above it right here. Uh, this is going to be where we put our long extension and extension or a universal socket or swivel socket uh, through here in order to get the top two bolts on the motor mount bracket that's attaching it to the engine block. Down here is going to be our looky loo hole where we'll be able to guide the extension through the top and uh, just barely see the top of the bolts for um, the upper bolts on that motor mount bracket. Basically, what I've done here is use a block of wood and I'm right at the, the bell housing sight plug, if you will. I'll zoom in for you. So I've got the block of wood basically kind of uh, on this bolt and sitting across, I guess, with uh, the uh, starter bump here, kind of just sitting there like that. That gives you enough of a flat surface to, wow, let me zoom back out so you're not staring at my face. Um, that gives you enough of a flat surface so that you can uh, support the engine and jack it up. Uh, we're going to remove these 13 millimeter bolts, 13 millimeter head bolts. I believe they're M8 uh, threads. So we're going to remove uh, these three bolts out. They're about four inches long. So uh, probably want to use in an impact or something like that. But basically, if you can see in here, uh, I don't have the OEM mount installed currently because I want to be able to show this. Um, there is a large pocket, it's about probably two inches deep, and the large pocket is what this mount, this portion of the mount actually sits into. And this is part of the reason why we do need to jack the engine up a pretty decent amount is so that we can get the motor mount out of the pocket and also get the motor mount bracket off of that stud that we see here and kind of get this out and then pull the bracket out uh, with it. This guy here, this is going to be your E14 bolt that actually attaches the motor mount to the bracket that is bolted to the block. So we're going to want to undo all three of these on both sides, make sure that the engine is supported, and we're going to start with the driver's side first. We're going to eat our vegetables first today because that's going to be the worst, but I promise you once we get that side done and move on to this side, it's going to be a cakewalk. So let's get into it. All right, so I got the camera set up so that you can kind of see how I'm getting this done. Um, I'm pretty much reaching up in there uh, all the way up into my bicep. Um, also, we're going to be using our E12 socket or external torque socket from before. All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to do my best to show you what is going on with how to get the E12 Torx bolts out of the engine mount bracket. I've got this little uh, contraption rigged up here so I can pull one of the hoses out of the way. But here we are in the wheel well. I got my extension here going in. And here is that upper window I was talking about. And we're going to try and zoom in here on the bolts. So I've got my extension and socket, swivel socket on the rearmost bolt, if that will come into focus. And you can see the other one peeking out right there with the yellow mark on it on the left. So I got the two bolts, those are the upper bolts on the engine mount bracket. And again you're going to use the extension and your socket through this upper window. All right, so for the passenger side, I took the liberty of already removing the bracket. Uh, basically, this side is going to be extremely straightforward. Um, you might need, uh, I think you need two of the three inch extensions for the rear bolt that is underneath the turbine housing right here. Let me zoom in for you. Should be this guy right here 
Uh, the rest of them, you may not even actually need a uh, extension. You might just need the E12 socket. Uh, so here, again, is what the bracket looks like. And of course, we've got the OEM mount. And in order to unbolt the, the OEM motor mount, you're gonna do it the same way with the three subframe bolts that we did on the other side as well. All right, so the next step is to assemble the poly bushings into the actual motor mount itself. Um, I do recommend using a little bit of uh, lube, grease, probably the best thing. High temperature grease would be the best. Um, insert both of the poly bushing halves into the mount first, and then lube the inside of the uh, bushing centers, and then you're gonna wanna push or press in the, um, the sleeve that the bolt actually goes through. So go ahead and do that now, and then we're gonna, what you wanna do is then assemble this piece onto the base plate of the motor mount assembly, and we're gonna tighten those to this spec. going to put the OEM bracket in at the same time we put the new motor mount in and then we're going to go ahead and put Loctite on all the bolts and torque it all down. I'll see you when we get that done. All right we've got the motor mount bracket uh, installed and torqued against the motor itself or the engine block and we have the main motor mount bolt torqued as well. That is the one connecting the motor mount to the bracket. The motor is basically uh, still up in the air. We're gonna move over to the easy side, if you will. Um, go ahead and install that. Uh, I promise that one is going to be so much easier than this side. And once we get that, we'll be able to put the motor down and begin installing everything back onto the car. All right, now, and as you can see, we've got the motor mounts installed and this thing ain't going nowhere. So, yeah. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the install for the engine mounts on your A90 Supra. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to email us at sales at veris-engineering.com. Until next time, we'll see you later.